Welcome, and in this video course, we are looking at the CyberOps Associate version one course. This course is going to cover the skills and knowledge needed for successfully handling the tasks and duties, responsibilities of an associate level security analyst working at a security operations center. The goal of this video series is to help prepare learners for the Cisco 200-201 certification. That's focusing on understanding the Cisco Cybersecurity Operation Fundamentals course, known as CBROPS. Module 26, Evaluating Alerts. So in this module, we are looking at sources of alerts and the overview of alert evaluation. So the source of alert it really depends. So we're gonna have a security onion, and this is basically an open source suite of security monitoring tools, typically referred to as a network security monitoring tool set, NSM tool set, that runs on a Ubuntu Linux distribution. Security onion basically provides three core functions for our analysts, and that is a full capture packet analysis and data type tool, packet-based and host-based intrusion detection systems, and alert analysis-based tools. Security Onion itself can be installed as a standalone installation or as a sensor and server platform. The components of Security Onion are owned and maintained by corporations such as Cisco, Riverband, and other things, but the code itself is still classified as open source, so they are used to distribute them legally. So how are the tools in Security Onion used? So we have them broken up into three main categories, analysis, detection, and data. The data is gonna be things like PCAPs or logs or alert data, metadata, syslog information, and so forth. That's gonna be fed into the detection. Maybe it's gonna be CAPM or SNORT or Zeek or OSAC or other detection-based tools. From there, we're going to feed it into a analysis-based tool like Wireshark or Squill. Basically, this figure is used to illustrate the way the components of the Security Onion work together. The data feeds the detection, the detection feeds the analysis. In the detection tool, again, we have like CAPM. This is a web application that's allowing for viewing what are PCAPs, transcripts rendered with TCP flow or Zeek tools. Snort is a network or host-based IDS-based system. Zeek is uh, formerly known as Bro, and this is also a network intrusion detection system. OSEC is also a intrusion detection system that's integrated within the Security Onion. Wazoo is a fully featured solution that provides a uh, broad spectrum for endpoint protection and includes things like host file analysis, file integrity monitoring, vulnerability detection, configuration assessment, and incident response. And then we have Circada, Circada which is also a network, it's also network detection detection system, or NID, that uses signature-based approaches that can be used for inline intrusion prevention. Again, most of these are going to be either a network or host-based intrusion detection system, or a, a NID or HID. NID is network, HID is host-based intrusion detection-based systems. For our analysis tools, we have got Squill. This provides a high-level console for investigating security alerts. And the nice thing is you can use Squill to pivot directly from Squill to other tools. Cabana is an interactive dashboard which will interface with Elastic Research Data. This allows querying of other NSMs to provide a more, more flexible data visualization. Wireshark is a pap capture analysis application built in the Security Onion suite for looking at packet analysis. Zeek is a network traffic analyzer that serves as security monitoring and it inspects all traffic from the network segment and does allow for in-depth analysis. It also allows for pivoting from Squill into Zeek, 
providing access to very accurate transactional logs, file content, and customized outputs. So now we understand the analysis tools, we need to look at how the alerts are generated. So security alerts are notification messages that are generated by some type of security monitoring tool, system, device, and they can come from just about anything. A security onion like Swill will provide the console that will integrate the alerts from multiple sources into something that is viewable and has timing capability. That way the security analyst can work through the query and uh, investigate, classify, escalate, or retire those alerts. Normally, there are five general tuple type information as time step information, which devices or systems are generating those alerts. Things like source IP address or source port or destination IP, destination port, or the IP protocol. These are the five main tuples. This isn't all of them, but these are the five main ones. Here we have Squill, and within our first column, this is going to be our ST column. This is the status of the event. They are color coded by priority based on the category of the alert. Very low, low, medium, and high. The colors range from light yellow to red. Red is the priority. The next column is CNT or count. This is the number of times this event has been detected for the same source and destination IP. The system will determine that this is a set of events is correlated or not. We have our sensor, which is the third column. This is the agent reporting the event. After that, we have our fourth column, which is the alert ID. This is a two-part number representing the sensor that has been reporting the problem and the event number of that sensor. Next column is the date and time. After that, our source IP, then our source port, our destination port, and our IP. And then after that, we have our message. And the message is what is going to be identifying the text from the event. This is configured in the rule that's triggering the alert. So rules and alerts, again, the alert will come from a number of sources like NIDs or HIDs or IPSs or firewalls or servers or switches or other. There can also be an asset management and monitoring system or a pad based system. Uh, again, it could be protocol based, HTTP, HTTPS, DNS, TCP transactions uh, that are captured via a packet capture. It could be syslog. All of these items are alerts and they are displayed in Squill and they will differ in the message formatting because they come from different sources. So the squill alert in the figure was triggered by snort. If we look at this, we can see the alert and then looking at the message, we can get more detail. So a snort rule. We have a rule header, rule options, and rule location. So the snort rule have the two main sections. They are shown in the figure as the rule header and the rule option. And then the lot bottom line, I'm going to grab my mouse. This is the header. And the green is our rule option. The header will contain the action to be taken the source and destination address, port, and the direction of the traffic flow. The rule option will include the message to be displayed, detailed packet content, the alert type, source ID, and other reference material. The rule location added by Squill to indicate the location of the rule in the security onion file structure. So here we have again, rule header in blue, our rule option in green, and the rule location in our purple. 
the rule header again, the alert, IP, any, any, destination, any, any. So let's break this down. The alert is the action to be taken. The second portion is the protocol, which is IP. The any, any is the first one, is the source of any IP with any port number. The arrow is the direction. And then the second any, any is the destination, both IP and port number. The rule options, you get some, some options here. Basically, it's the structure of the options section and its variables. In this portion of the rule, it's enclosed in parentheses as shown in the figure, which we just looked at. We have a MSP, sorry, MSG colon, and that starts it. There are three common sources for snort rules, GPL, ET, VRT. GPL is the older, the older snort rules that were created by Sourcefire. ET is a snort rule from emerging threats. And VRT are rules that are immediately available to subscribers and are released to their registered after users 30 days after they were created. So here we have our MSG. We have a GPL attack response. So the MSG is the message, the content, which is going to refer to the content of the packet. Our reference is not shown in the figure, but it will be the link to the URL that provides more information. We have a class type, which is going to be the category of the attack. We have a SID. Security ID, which is a unique identifier for identifying the rule. And then we have a version or a reversion of the rule. We do have a lab covering our snort and firewall rules, which we'll do separate videos. All right, our next major section is the overview of the alert evaluation. So there has to be a alert evaluation. There has to be some form of review. The threat landscape is constantly changing. New vulnerabilities, new threats are discovered regularly. New attackers are always finding new ways to innovate their attack methods. So it is better to have alerts that are sometimes generated by innocent traffic than it is to have missed miscellaneous or to miss malicious based traffic. So it is necessary to have skilled analysts investigating them. We typically have a tier one, and they will work through uh, queries of alerts like uh, using Squirrel, using uh, pivoting tools uh, into Zeek and Wireshark and uh, Cabana to verify the alerts are actually exploits and not just something miscellaneous. So evaluating the alert comes down to four main classifications. True positive, false positive, true negative, false negative. A true positive, that is when the alert has been verified to be an actual security incident. The alert is true and it was flagged as a security incident. False positive, the alert does not indicate an actual security incident it's benign activity that results in a false positive. That means something that should not have been flagged as negative was flagged. An alternate situation, like a true negative, is no security incident has occurred, but the activity is benign. That's normal traffic, that should be okay. A false negative is undetected incident, something bad, has occurred and nothing found it. We want to limit our false negatives. So let's look at that in more of a racy type chart. Positive and negative, true and false. Positive and alert exists. Negative, no alert exists. So when we have a true positive, the incident occurred and it was flagged. A false positive. It was no incident occurred, but the alert was flagged. A true negative, no incident had occurred, but 
no alert had actually been flagged. That's what we want. A false negative is an incident did occur and no alert happened. We want to limit our false negatives. Benign events are those that shouldn't trigger alerts, regular traffic. Excess benign events indicate that some rules or other detectors need to be improved. The filtering to remove benign alerts should uh, be reviewed. Cybersecurity analysts will need to be responsible for informing security personnel about false positives that are occurring and to try to minimize them. False negatives may be discovered well after an exploit had occurred, and this can happen through Retrospect Security Analysis, or RSA. RSA can occur when newly obtained rules are applied. For this reason, it's important to monitor threat intelligence to learn about new vulnerabilities regularly so that we can minimize the false negatives. So when we're looking at our analysis, our analysis can have a few different forms, deterministic and probabilistic. Deterministic analysis evaluates risk based on what's known about the vulnerability. Often this is risk analysis only describes worst case scenario. Probabilistic analysis estimates the potential success of an exploit by estimating the likelihood that if one step in an exploit has been successful, it's been completed at the next step will also be successful. So prob probabilistic is more of an estimate of potential where deterministic is worst case scenario always. In deterministic analysis, all information to accomplish an exploit is assumed to be known. In probabilistic analysis, it's assumed that port numbers that will be used can only be predicted with some degree of confidence and that is not always going to be the case. Again, the two main types of analysis, deterministic is for exploits to be successful. All prior steps in the exploit must be successful. The cybersecurity analyst knows the steps for a successful exploit. Probabilistic analysis is statistical techniques that are used to determine the probability that a successful exploit will occur based on the likelihood of each exploit. All right, so that actually wraps up this module. We looked at our analysis tools. We looked at our platforms for pulling in data, looking at Security Onion. We looked at Squill, Wireshark, Zeek, Cabana. We looked at things like Snort. We looked at classifications, true, false, positive, negative type alerting as well as alternate situations. We looked at our analysis, both deterministic and probabilistic analysis. And that is it for this module. Questions or concerns, definitely feel free to reach out. If you have any questions or anything, please feel free to reach out. Again, with this material, being able to ask questions and discuss some of the topics in the lecture, help build long-term retention, so do not be afraid to, to communicate with this topic. Again, I'm here if you need anything. Thank you.